Onivia, League of Legends highlights. Um, here in the LCK, although he is zero and two on it so far. Oh, as we'll see, right. Jack's okay, counter pick. Doo -doo. That's a lot of fun. They needed physical damage, right? And yes, uh, Jax is a bit of a hybrid, but still is. In the late game, and oh, counter gank timing Ooh. pretty nice here from Ono, but Faker might have been baited in. Has to flash to get himself out of the way. The death ray just barely not getting there. And now Onflix the one in trouble. The flash forward from Ono, he's committing to this one. As Faker may have overextended, Karis gets the first blood, and now Ono is looking to try and make the trade better here for T1. Does manage to safeguard his way over. It's a great position on the gravity field, but it does not matter. He's just going to have to crab rave his way to the death chamber. <laughs> and that will be the double for Ona. Versus three, instead of the one versus three that they were thinking, as in goes Ona. Will have to get himself out as the counter strike is not going to be enough. Leap strike is going to do it for Dudu. And immediately things go wrong. Yeah, this is really difficult to execute a dive. As far as how this game is sitting right now, two to two, very even on gold. Is now Dudu. Counter strike going to get the stun. But Zayas throwing out the needlework. This is looking like a solo kill in no the making. As Dudu, can he actually get out of the way? Why are we bottom lane? I guess there's a gank happening as Sandi immediately is going to ult. Onfleek picks up the kill. Nice W from Sandi as well to try and get a bit of extra damage. Shield comes out, flash forward from Sandi. Right, that uh, the extra range on both of these teams. And we've seen most of the time there is so much extra range, like tanky items where he gets ahead early and then helps his laners succeed rather than being to carry himself later on. Because they're going to make that run more play. Yeah, I've seen this one before. This time the needles are going to connect. Fake a Flashing forward, they're looking to really punish this guy as the... Okay, yeah, we're not going to quite find that Q from Ona, but he is able to at least help lock down the Jax. As meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, Harmer Life Esports are getting some plates and making things happen. T1 should be able to take this turret, though. Wave in a fantastic position for that. So it should be traded evenly. Uh, it's pretty good for T1 that Jax is the one who loses out the most from this because Dudo obviously is going to lose quite a few minions during this and is out of lane and now under a lot more pressure because it's not a turret to fall back onto. Gold going into the Gwen is pretty massive. So I think this is a pretty big trade up for T1, even though a lot of that gold is going to go to the Zeri in the bottom lane. It's really well timed here. This Palmer Life Esports want this Drake, which they do, and they are going to try and take it. They are going to have to sacrifice this turret for it. For it. So Shirley is going to be able to get him in here and uh, take that one down. Cloud Soul. What a build is actually pretty nutty. Anyway, um, back to the, to the correct video game here. Is T1 <laughs> actually starting to get aggressive. There's the flash forward from Faker. Sam is going to actually get kicked back this time. Immediately gets traded for Faker's life. Is now on fleek. Trying to get out of there. Owner says no, but the... Oh, 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 just barely enough with the needlework. Is going to lock down on fleek. Now Zayas taking a bit of damage here as Ona gets underneath the turret looking for Karas. He gets a big old shield on the Q, misses! And now Dudu is tidying up the fight. That's a massive lamppost to the face and that's an ace for Harmer Life Esports. And this is a massive turning point in this game because now you've given Dudu the ability to absolutely rule this game. Karas gets an extra kill, he survives there with that missing Q. And he's got uh, Morel and Amicon online already. The crown is part of what keeps him alive in this fight. He is uh, now officially, you know, like an old Aurelia, as far as the build is concerned. Titanic Hydra now completed. Will be that Runan's I assume coming in yeah. as the third option. And then well, on uh, this one, yeah, you got to do something though. Realm Warp is going to come in, so there is going to be an opportunity to fight this one. But it is going to be the Jax that locks down the Baron, and now Owner is just. Caught with absolutely nowhere to go now. Onfleek looking for even more. It might be a sacrifice of his life, though, as Dudu dives on top of Kumiyushi. One more auto is going to do it. The exhaust is fantastic. On to Faker to lock down the last remaining source of consistent damage on this team. And I guess Zayas was there, but he didn't 5, last too long either, and that is absolutely... So chances of ever getting map control back, though, in this game. Yep. Dudu going to dive on top of Zayas here. Actually wins out on the trade. The Counter-Strike is avoided, but Onfleek now taking a lot of damage here towards the bottom side. That's a Moonlight Vigil. Can he lock down the kill? The answer is no, because there's a Moonstone on this Yumi. Not going to build Ludens like some other ones. And so that is going to mean <laughs> that uh, Onfleek will stay alive. I remember there was someone that was bothered by the, uh, the Yumi builds that we've been seeing and calling for a Moonstone. So we do have one now. Yeah, I was, I was pretty upset with the Ludens uh, <laughs> myself. I don't know if I made it known publicly, but I was like watching the raising eyebrows a little bit. This time, it's a great choice to have the, the Moonstone. And that's yeah. going to be an inhibitor down here. There's, again, not much T1 can do about this in this moment in time. They have to kind of just sit back and wait until that Baron wears off. Now it's gone, but 
permanent damage. Losable because they just be walking back, getting more movement speed for this comp. You kidding me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a Zeri in this comp. Oh no. Oh yikes. And also the stickiness of the Jax is just ridiculous. And he's got Blade of the Ruin King. Sterix just completed. And look at the gold fall off a cliff here. They can overextension, or you know, I mean, even a flip on a Baron isn't enough uh, in, in this case. And I think T1. If they constantly get taken down very quickly, yeah, exactly. There's so much vision, and I think that Hamwa will be looking for a turn. They do. They look for Ona here as the final chapter comes down. He's going to get stopped, but that's a big old shield. Dudu has to use his stopwatch relatively early in this one as the Needlework's doing so much work. Ult from Samdi comes out, and now he's going to have to flash himself out of the way, and it's now Gumiyushi that's doing the damage. Realm Warp to try and let them escape is now Karas. May have overextended, immediately gets kicked back. Oh, and Ona is massive, but it could be another pentakill for Zeri here. That's the triple, as Goom is going to go down for the Quadra. This is what happens with his champion. Teleport yep. to end it. That's oh. an ace. That's the game. Hanwha life! <laughs> I, think, I don't think we're going to see Zeri again, ladies and gentlemen. This <laughs> champion is a little bit strong. I don't know. The next is going to fall down in Hanwha Life Esports. They do it again. They upset T1 in game one. There you go. The Zeri ends up cleaning up the team fight.